All right, so here I have journal 23. And last time we were uh, working on solving for x when we have x squares. So if I wanted to get this x by itself, I need to get the x squared by itself first. So I need to remove this 3. So if I were to remove this 3, I'm dividing both sides by 3. And so that cancels. x squared drops down, and 108 divided by 3 is 36. When you, div when you try to get rid of a square, in order to remove it or undo it, you have to take the square root. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides, 2 and the root cancel, bringing down the x. The square root of 36, it's a nice square. Um, it is a 6. But it's not just positive 6, right? We learned yesterday that when you take a square root, it is a positive and a negative. So it's a positive 6 and a negative 6. So this here is my answer because quadratics or x squares should always have two x values when you solve so let's try out this one now so there's a parentheses in a way but <clears throat> what we said last time is that make sure when you're trying to solve for x that you try to get rid of um the the stuff on the outside of the x you don't want to try to bring in the stuff so what i mean here is like if you're solving for x here, the furthest thing away is this 4, right? This x has a 3, and then it would get um, squared, and then afterwards it'd be multiplied by 4. So the first thing we have to do is actually divide by 4 to both sides. So then the 4s cancel, bringing down the x plus 3 squared. 16 divided by 4 is 4. If I want to get rid of this square, I don't distribute. Remember, to get rid of a square, I have to take a square root. So I'm basically slowly removing everything on the left-hand side until I get that x by itself. Now, once you cancel out the square, the 2 here, the parentheses goes away. The parentheses is only there for that exponent. The square root of 4 is 2, but it's a plus and minus 2. It's a positive and a negative 2. So to get this x by itself, I need to remove this 3. So what I'm going to do to make this easier on myself is split this equation up as x plus 3 equals positive 2 and x plus 3 equals negative 2 since this has two x values. So to solve out this one, all I have to do is subtract the 3 to both sides. That cancels, so x is equal to negative 2 minus 3 gives me negative 1. So that's my first x value. For the other one here, if I were to subtract by, uh, I think that meant to be a 3, my bad. Yeah, this meant to be a 3. So if x plus 3, to get rid of that, I have to do minus 3 on both sides. And so that cancels. x is equal to negative 2 minus 3, which is negative 5. So it looks like x is equal to either negative 1 or negative 5. And that's it. Um, let's try out this last one here. So to get this x squared by itself, we first need to remove the negative 2. So I'm going to divide by negative 2. That cancels. x squared equals 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. All right, to get rid of a square, I think you guys have heard me multiple times, I have to take a square root. But this one's interesting. So it looks like when the root and the 2 cancel, I just have x. But then what is the square root of negative 1, right? Because if I were to just look at the square root of negative 1, try to decompose it with a factor tree, um, the only thing I can think of is 1 times negative 1, and these are not identical. These are not what we call identical pairs, so I can't bring it out of the root. Whereas, like, you know, if you have something that's the square root of 25, which we know is a perfect root because 25 is 5 times 5, well, there are two pairs of 5, so you can bring it out the root. But in this case here, mm, these are not the same. That's negative, that's positive. And this happens to be always the case of, of negative numbers. Like, think about it. If you have, like, negative 6, right, you have negative 2 times 3, but in this case, you know, One's going to be a negative, one's going to be positive. So it's like you'll never have a, um, a pair of identical numbers because one, ha one of them has to be a negative. So that's unfortunate. Um, so this means that, well, we can't take the square root of a negative number. Or can we? So today we're going to talk about 
what it means to have a negative square root. And so for now, we'll accept this as the answer. All right, um, so let's take a look at what is really a negative um, square root. All right, so here's that problem that we saw before. Um, this time I just put an I here. Instead of an x squared, this is an i squared. And um, I'm going to say that i squared, I'm going to declare i squared to be equal to negative 1. And I'm going to try to solve for i, just like how I did before. So I'm just going to rewrite this equation. And you guys are probably like, why is she redoing this problem? Well, I, I want us to know uh, uh, what exactly is i. So I'm going to take the square root to get rid of this 2. So I can get i by itself. So I know that, you know, the 2 and the root will cancel, bringing down just i. And so i is equal to the square root of negative 1. And then we get back to that same problem we saw in the bell work, right? So here's the thing. This here, i, when there is a negative under a root, we call that an imaginary number. Let me write that up here. So this is what we call an imaginary number number okay and there's a reason why it has to go back into history but this is a very important um value here so anytime you take a square root of something and you get a negative number you have what we call an imaginary number so eyes or imaginary numbers way back in you know um the old ancient times um we were very query about different um we were questioning a lot about you know, the existence of numbers. Like, we call natural numbers, numbers that are like um, ones, two, three, four. So whole positive, whole numbers that are positive are natural numbers. So earlier on, people believed that that, that was the only numbers that existed were these um, whole numbers. But then afterwards, people were like, no, we got to have, um, you know, zeros too. So we start out with like these whole numbers being the natural numbers natural numbers and then later on we we're like well we got to have um uh zeros as well and people used to question whether zero was a real number but you know we know now that zero is a very important number that we use you use it all the time when we're talking about you know about well nothing when there is nothing there it's zero um, negative numbers were also very questionable, but we know that negative numbers do exist in the world, right? When you have something that's being subtracted or when you have, you know, a, uh, a minus value in your bank account, that, that feels pretty real to me. That means that you're in debt. Um, and so negative numbers are real numbers as well. And then we go into fractions, you know, fractions are what we call rational numbers, um, and those are real numbers, and these were numbers that used to be questioned too. So what I'm getting at is like as time progressed, we had to figure out more uh, numbers to add to our vocabulary. And so there was one point where we took a square root and we had a negative number, and we were like, well, you know, that we can't have negative square roots. Turns out you can, you can work with them. Um, so we labeled them as imaginary numbers, but, that, but I, I really don't like the term imaginary, but we'll just go with that because that's what history has decided to call them. But imaginary numbers are uh, usable numbers, okay? Um, and we're gonna learn how to work with them today. So, um, because i is equal to the square root of negative 1, turns out um, i squared is equal to negative 1. And let me just explain why that's the case. So these two things are very important, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight them and start them. you got to know these two things, by the way, that i equals the square root of negative 1 and i squared is equal to negative 1. So... What this is saying is that when you square i, you get back to a real number, right? Because negative 1 is considered a real number. And so let's understand why. So i squared is basically saying you're taking um, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. And turns out when you multiply two roots and they're the same number inside, they cancel the root. And so that means that inside, 
the negative one comes out. Um, if, if you're not familiar with this, let me just give you another example. So we know that the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, well, that's just the square root of 9. When you square root 9, well, that's just 3. But if you were just to ignore this part for a moment, isn't just these two the same root? So then you get the number that was inside, right? It's almost like you cancel out the roots. Same thing if you were to do the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. The roots would cancel, giving you 5. But if you also just looked inside, when you multiplied the square root of 25, the square root of 25 is 5. So um, if you follow this pattern, taking a square root times a square root, the roots cancel, giving you negative 1. And so that there is our uh, small proof for today. Um, so i squared is equal to negative 1 and i is equal to the square root of negative one. What this is saying is that we can switch back from imaginary number to a real number. All right, sorry if that was a very lengthy definition, but I thought I explained, you know, what is going on with imaginary numbers. So let's go up ahead and uh, do some few problems with imaginary numbers. Okay, so here I have a square root and it's a negative under the square root. So I know that this problem is going to give me an imaginary number because there's a negative sign. But for a moment, let's just ignore that negative sign and let's just uh, take the square root of just 16. Now the square root of 16 is four. You guys are probably familiar with that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is try to just um, uh, try to manipulate this so I can take the square root of 16. So how I do this is, I'm going to be very clever here, I'm going to um, separate the 16 from the negative 1 by doing this. So if I put them in separate parentheses, isn't that 16 times negative 1 still negative 16 on the inside? Sure is. So the reason why I want to write it this way is because when you separate them, you're implying that when you multiply this root, you get that. So when you have multiplication, you can separate the root. So I'm going to give the 16 its own root and the negative 1 its own root. Well, if I do that, then I can solve this part here. This part is just 4. But this guy right here, well, that's the square root of negative 1, which is the definition of i. Remember, i in the last slide was the square root of negative 1, right? So in that case, next to the square root of 16, or the 4, I should have an i. And that's my answer. So basically, when you have the square root of a negative number, just take the square root of that number like normal, and then, um, uh, and then just put an i next to it. That's all. All right, so let's try out this problem here. So you have a negative square root of 49. So again, I'm just going to ignore that negative sign for a moment, but I know that the square root of 49 is a nice number. It's 7. So in this case, um, if I take the square root of 49, I get 7. And then because I know there's a negative next to it, I need to put an i next to this number here. And then that is all. I'm done. So basically, took the square root of the regular number. If it's a negative, I put an i next to it. This one here is a little bit tricky. Um, so let's think about this one here. I know there's an, a negative here, so I know I'm going to need an i. But I need to take the square root of 52. And 52 is not a perfect square. So I'm going to build me a factor tree to see if I have some pairs. So um, 52 is made up of 13 and 4. 13 can't be broken up because it's a prime number, but 4 can. 4 can be broken up as 2 times 2, and that's a pair. So 2 comes out. 13 is a leftover prime, so it goes back in. And I need an i because, well, this is a square root of a negative number. And that's it. All right, so let's do some um, equations or expressions where we have to simplify this. So one more definition before I get into um, simplifying expressions. Let me just explain that uh, complex numbers is basically when you take a real number and imaginary number and combine them. And so we're going to see a lot of this. I'm going to have real numbers and imaginary numbers side by side. 
So in this case, like if I had a real number A and a imaginary number B I, where B is some sort of number, um, you know, basically you want to treat your real numbers like you always do and your imaginary numbers almost like variables. And I'll show you what I mean in the next slide. So complex numbers is basically a combination of real numbers with imaginary numbers. Okay, so let's start off with something easy here like this one. Okay, so as you can see, that's a real number, imaginary number, real number, imaginary number. All you're asked to do here is simplify. So basically, all you got to do is combine the like terms. And so if I really look at this, it looks like these two would be like terms, 2 and 3, because they're real numbers. So 2 and 3 add to give you 5. Whereas 5i added with negative 4i gives you positive 1i, or just i. So in that case, when I look at these two here, that's a real number, that's an imaginary number, and I can't combine them because they're not like terms. So this is it. This is my answer. And now I've simplified. Let's try another one. So this one here, I have, you know, uh, one in parentheses and the other one in parentheses, and I notice that they're subtracting, but remember, this minus sign's in front of a parentheses, so you can probably treat this as a distribution problem. So if I were to distribute this negative, let's see what would I have. Now, this side here, there's not a number out here, so I can just bring this down like normal. So this is 4 minus 6i minus 3 plus 7i, because negative times 3 is negative 3, negative times negative 7i is positive 7i. All right, so from here, I just have to simplify this problem, kind of like what I did in that first problem. So I'm gonna just seek out my real numbers. So this is a real number, this is a real number. Four minus three gives me, hmm, one. Negative six i added with seven i, that's gonna be a positive one i, or just an i. You can write in one there if it, if it bothers you not to. Um, and so this here is my final answer. Okay, let's try out D before we get to C here. I just realized I just scribbled all of that. <laughs> Let me erase that. All right, so with D here, I have to have, I have this 8i in front of this parenthesis, so I have to distribute it inside. So if I were to distribute it, let's see what we have. So negative 8i times 2, well, you just multiply the 8 and the 2 together, and you get 16, and then you have to have an i next to it because there's an i. Then when you multiply the 8i with the negative 4i, well, 8 times negative 4 gives you negative 32. Now, i times i gives you i squared. It's kind of like if you multiplied x with x, you get x squared. Same thing here. i times i gives you i squared. But these two, we know we can't combine because that's not the same exponent as that one. So we know we can't combine them. But here's also one more thing. Because there is an i squared here, I need to change that because i squared is a real number if you remember in the definition. So i squared is negative 1. And so anytime you see an i squared, you have to change it because you can simplify more if it's a real number. So... 16i drops down, negative 32 drops down, but instead of this i squared, I'm going to replace it with a negative one because now I can multiply these two and I would get 16i plus 32. And again, these are not like terms, so I can't simplify anymore. And so this is my final answer. All right. So again, whenever you see an i squared or whenever you multiply and you happen to get an i squared, make sure you change it to a negative one. All right, this part here. Now, these parentheses are implying that we need to multiply each of the, um, the parentheses together. So what I like to do is multiply two at a time. So I'm gonna multiply these two, um, and if I were, negative three times five gives me negative 15. But the i times the i gives me i squared. And then I'm going to bring down the other i. Now, before I multiply this with this parentheses, I notice I got an i squared. So this i squared, again, is going to be a negative 1 if I replace it 
And so in this case here, I have a negative 15 times a negative 1 inside. And I'm going to bring down the i. Well, negative 15 times negative 1 gives me positive 15. And then there's an i next to it, so I'm just going to multiply this guy by i. And that looks like all I can do because, I, the, yeah, 15i, there's not much more I can simplify. So this here is my final answer. So again, whenever you see an i squared, you need to replace it with a negative 1. All right, so now that we've kind of gotten warmed up here, I was thinking let's do two problems from the homework packet. I'm going to do problem 4 and um, 6 from the homework in the next slide. So problem four here, notice how it has a seven I, oh, by the way, these problems are on page two of the packet. So if you want to turn to page two, I'm working on number four. So number four here, I have seven I and then this three I in front of this parentheses. Um, so I am going to try to simplify here. So because I see there's a three I outside this parentheses and there isn't an exponent outside this parentheses either, so since there's not an exponent here, I can distribute this 3i inside. If there was an exponent here, like a 2, like let's say it's squared, you cannot distribute it inside. You always have to take care of the exponent first before you can distribute. All right, so I'm going to bring down the 7i. Uh, let me do this in black. 7i, because there's nothing there for it to multiply. If I distribute the 3i, I get, um, let me move this back. If I distribute the 3i to the negative 8, that's going to be negative 24i. And then 3i times negative 6i gives me negative 18i squared. Okay, so what I notice immediately is that when I multiplied, I got an i squared. So I know I have to change this. Uh, these two are like terms, so let's go ahead and combine them. So 7i minus 24i gives me negative... Um, 17i, yep, and then negative 18 comes down, but instead of a negative, I mean, instead of an i squared, you have a negative 1, and so if you multiply these two, you get a positive 18, I'm just going to drop down the 17i, and these two are not like terms, so this is my final answer. Let me just say, you guys might start to notice that every time I see an i square, all I'm doing is plugging in a negative 1. And what that does is it basically just changes the sign that is for that term. So if this 18, um, negative 18 here, if I saw that i square, all I could, um, to do this a little bit faster, all you got to do is just change the sign, flip the signs. Like you don't have to show me that you're plugging in negative 1. If you want to just change the sign right then and there, because you see that there's an i squared, you can do that. And to me, that, that's fine. So let's do problem six here. So this one, there is a square. Let me just say, please do not ever distribute a exponent inside the parentheses like this, okay? So I see this all the time where people will square the, the eight, the first term, and then square the other term, which they would get like nine i squared. And then they're like, I'm done. But this is not the answer, okay? Let me just say that. So please do not distribute exponents like that because that's not what exponents mean. Exponents, turns out, when you have an exponent and something is squared, you're multiplying that item twice. So what I mean is, this here is actually 8 plus 3i times 8 plus 3i. And then you're going to keep working this out. So... When you multiply this, this is foiling, right? We're going to multiply the 8 with the 8, which is 64. 8 times 3i gives you 24i. And then I'm done multiplying with the 8. So now I'm going to multiply with the 3i with the 8, which gives me also 24i. 3i times 3i is going to be positive 9i squared. So from here, I notice the middle terms um, come together. So I have 64 plus... 24 plus 24 gives me 48i. And then I notice that this here is a i squared, so I'm going to change the sign uh, here. So this is going to be 9 times negative 1, which makes it 64 plus 48i minus 9. And so I notice that these two are like terms. So for 64 minus 9 gives you 50. 
55 plus 48i. And I think that's it because you can't combine these two. So that's all you can do. So this is my answer. All right, so I hope that helps you out with your homework. Let me just say for this page here, page two, the only problems you'll be able to do at this point of this journal is one through six. So please try out the other problems on this page.